thousands flock to these London landmarks every day. But few tourists will consider what lurks beneath their unsuspecting feet. What these sightseers are blissfully unaware of, ELN is about to get closer than you can imagine. I've got my paper suit on, harness, big boots, rubber gloves, ready to go down the hole into the sewers, just a stone's throw away from Trafalgar Square. I'm bracing myself for a really strong smell, but I'm not sure how I'm going to take it, but we'll see how it goes. Peering into that dark manhole is more daunting than it looks, but once you've started down the rungs, there's no way to back out. Without daylight, it was at first hard to see as I tramped down a cramped tunnel towards the sewers proper, and when my eyes adjusted, I could see that gushing water has worked smelly gunk, fat, and much worse, into every corner. I've never been so glad to be wearing huge waterproof waders. Well, we've got the, the, the newer fat, which is uh, this section here, about a metre and a half, and then the hairy bit, as I call it, with the black hair stuff on it, going off down through the tunnel is the older stuff. These so-called fat bergs can prove a real nightmare when keeping the sewers flowing and avoiding future health hazards. The first sort of metre, metre and a half, the brownish stuff, is, is what we would call, that's fat that's been generated within the last two or three days. And then after that, the fat, as it stands, compresses and compacts and gets more and more solid as it goes further through uh, the sewer. At the other end, it will be that solid that actually, if it breaks off, it breaks off in large pieces with what we call the fat birds, which actually can potentially get locked in pipes, drop pipes and such like. And I mean, where, where does it come from? Is it from people just chopping fat down the drain? I mean, obviously, if you're, if you're running a restaurant or a fish and chip shop or anywhere where you're using large volumes of fat to cook, one of your overheads has got to be disposal of that fat. And the cheapest way of getting rid of that fat is to actually put it down the sewer. You know, I mean, I'm, we're not down here 24 seven. Um, and even if we were, if we were down here and we saw the fat being disposed of, there might be four or 5,000 connections up here. We've got no idea where it comes from. Thames water splashes a million pounds every month just on clearing up 80,000 blockages a year. It's found a way to turn that expensive problem into a solution which could cut its energy bills. They've teamed up with energy firm 2OC to trap the fat before it even enters the sewers and use it as a fuel in a power station. We do have plans for, a, uh, for the world's first fat-fueled power station. We're going to build that at Beckton, right next to our biggest sewage works. And how it's going to work is that we're going to harvest fat from restaurants around uh, the centre of London. There's around 100,000 restaurants in London. We estimate that if we can get 10% of, of those restaurants to sign up to having fat traps underneath their sinks, which are li little boxes which divert fat, which would otherwise run into our sewers and block our sewers, run into these boxes, we'll harvest the fat that way, put them in little vans and drive them along to Beckton in East London. There, in two years, two years time from now, we hope to have uh, this fat-powered uh, station up and running, and that will be creating renewable energy, which we will use to run our sewage works. We'll also use it to run our next door desalination plant when that's in use. And we'll also uh, push out the energy that those two plants don't use into the national grid, and that will go to supply homes and businesses across the area. Rising energy bills stink as much as the sewers. The water company will be hoping their new energy effort stops them pouring more money down the drain. Vicky Ellis, Energy Live News, Trafalgar Square. <laughs>